Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Zane. Um, some again. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very interesting video because I've been seeing several videos online about who is, hang on the camera's a little crooked, who is the leader of Aces and Eight. Now I've heard the names Abyss thrown around. I've heard the names Bully Ray thrown around. I've heard the names Robert Blue thrown around. And those are good names. I even heard the evil, deniable, basically, jack-off of Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Which I've heard the stories about how Jeff Jarrett used to really screw people over in TNA back when it first started. Those names have been thrown around. And they're valid names. Also, Sting and Hogan. But I believe one name has not been mentioned. And this is a name I believe that might be it. Not saying that out of the ones I mentioned, none of them could be. I believe, before I mention one, I believe it is. The two possible, I think, are the best. Would be Bully Ray and would be Jeff Jarrett. I thought about it very carefully. I have thought about Robert Roode, and this is a good possibility is Robert Roode. But if you're going to make it clearly, how the storyline has gone so far, the one that's gotten the most heat between Jeff Jarrett and Bully Ray is Bully Ray. Since Jeff Jarrett left, it would make sense. I'm going to start with Jeff Jarrett. I'm sorry. With Jeff Jarrett, it would make perfect sense to say it's him. For the simple fact, since December, he's been gone. He's only been mentioned at least once or twice, especially during anniversary when they gave Sting the Hall of Fame. He's been basically talked on and off for a while now. But to go after the people they've gone after, Bully Ray, Sting, Hogan, these are the people that screwed Jeff Jarrett. I mean, also you have Kurt Angle, where they beat up on Kurt Angle. Now the thing is that going after Austin Aries, um, during the time when Double J, the jack-off, was there, he didn't really go after him. He didn't go after the Pope. Pope was not really fully involved in that, unless you're talking about Immortal, how they basically wiped out the Pope, and Pope is not there, and I don't like it. The Pope should be still in this. He should have already been at the top of the BFG series along with Magnus. I would have liked Magnus and the Pope and Samoa Joe with AJ Styles as the top four. That would have been good. I wanted that. But what they have is not so bad. But those are the ones I wanted. But they didn't have it. And like I said, Jeff Jarrett didn't have anything to do with the Pope at the time. He was working with Samoa Joe. And I heard Samoa Joe's name thrown around. That was by the British Fist. And I wish to say the Brit British, <laughs> I'm sorry, I wish to say the British Fist is a very good source of information next to the Off the Rope show. Not saying Dream Boy um, 899 and a few others, the Razor Randy Orton, they don't all have something very good to say. I've seen some of the videos, they all have very good to say. But the one I go to is going to be the British Fist and it's going to be Off the Rope show. This video I'm hoping will be connected to the British Fist first. And I wish to post this to the British Fist. The person. I believe. And with Bully Ray, it sounds that it would be perfect with Bully Ray because they did mention him on their show. The storyline has been mostly been showing how uh, good heel he's been, how he's manipulating most of the storyline, how he's been able to get what he wants. He's worked with James Storm, he's worked with Robert Rude, he's worked with Sting, he worked basically with this, and that's another name thrown around, as I said before. But this is a name I think you guys, you might want to think about. Because if you remember the last impact, someone went into the ring, put the mask on, and hit in the back of the neck with that flapjack in Austin Aries' head. It looked like Garrett Bischoff. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. I'm doing the dark, extremely distant dark horse that probably isn't that person, but maybe involved in it. What happened if the Bischoff family is the one behind Aces and Eight? Let's get into this part. Let's make this clear. Aces and Eight was has been a very good storyline. They have not shoved it down our throats like I hope they 
they wouldn't, I mean, how can I explain this? Look, they've been in the WWE, they shoved the Nexus down our throat. And TNA, they shoved, um, pretty much they shoved the mortal down our throat. Even Fortune, to a point, they shoved it down our throat. Now, I'm not saying Aces and Eight is reaching that point, but at least I am saying that prominently featuring it in a way to at least for some of the wrestlers that are not involved in Aces and Eight, they're getting more prominent time. They're being involved in the storyline instead of being dominated by the storyline of Aces and Eight, like in the Mortal. My belief is this. Last year, I think it was lockdown. Garrett beat the crap out of his dad. Dad was gone. Of course, they did the party with Flair and everybody. And then it was just Garrett in his storyline trying to get over. Now, the thing is, if you take into account most of the storylines that he's been involved with, Devon, which Devon basically dealt with the Pope, which sucked, but the Pope was a Devon was in the the side of Devon and a thorn in his side when it came to his kids, you could say that maybe seeing it in this respect. If Garrett is the one involving Ace and Nate, maybe giving the inside information or the head of it, with his father backing him up with it, it would make a little bit of sense. See it in this respect. Sting gave Garrett his boots to become a wrestler. Even though Garrett seemed to be happy, he lost the advantage of being, impar being partial. In other words, being a ref, having power over the matches. He lost that. Sticking him with Devon, where in a sense, you could say he could go after Devon, but he hasn't. But you can say that if Devon is the one that's been giving him prominent time on TV, and he's been willing to share it, he would go after Devon's enemies. He would go after the Pope. And Pope was very prominent last year with Devon, even though it was sporadic and it was crap. It was still a prominent featured storyline. This sounds very far-fetched and I don't blame you. But it's kind of hard not to think about this. If the Bischoff family is the one behind Aces and Ace, if it's not Garrett, if it's Eric, it would make also sense because a lot of the characters that have been attacked, Kurt Angle, who was part of Immortal, who basically failed Immortal, he would go after him. The Pope, where he was going after Immortal before, the Pope basically gets taken out, gone. Robert Rude, when he turned, when he was faced, he was interfering with Immortal. He got taken out for a little while. It would make some sense if the Bischoff family was in this that the Bischoff family would be manipulating this. But if it was Garrett who is the leading of it, think of it in this respect. If Garrett was placed there by his father, let's say his father orchestrated everything and tried to put Garrett over, it would make a huge crap load of sense. Because when they tried to make Garrett featured by himself, they put him with Gunner, they tried to do it with his father, it flopped, and Basically, Eric is not the type of person that with his own child, he's just going to let him disappear and fade into the sunset. He's going to find some way to get his son over. He will do it. He's going to try and make sure this kid is prominently featured, even if he has no talent in the ring, no mic skills, no, fully, sorry, no physique, no in-ring storytelling, no charisma. Nothing. He's basically crap, at least for now. This would be one way to get him over. At least feature him enough that if he's helping Aces and Ace, he would be the inside, in, inside person. If he's being put on top of Aces and Ace, it would make perfect sense that his father would bring him in, make him the top, then leave or stay with him and let his son do the, do the business and we would go from there. Now, how we're going to know this is actually happened, ladies and gentlemen? This is how it goes. Right now, we have not seen Garrett much at all. The last time we saw Garrett, maybe about a couple of months ago, when he was on Devon, with not on Devon, when he was with Devon, dealing with Robbie T and Robbie E. Now, I would say, sooner or later, you're going to have to show Garrett. Garrett has to eventually appear. If it's going to be with Devon, fine. 
But if this impact on the next one has Garrett Bischoff appearing in any form of capacity, even if they have a backstage, sorry, backstage with him, in any form of capacity, where he has not been seen in months, where it would make no sense for the Aces and Ace storyline, there you got it. Garrett is either an informer for Aces and Eight, or he's the ringleader for Aces and Eight. With his father giving him a hand, maybe you'll see Garrett, if this is going to happen, and this happened in the storyline, if you see Garrett a couple of times throughout the night, and then you see him on a cell phone talking to someone, or he's talking to somebody in the shadows, this would make sense. Then my assumption would be correct that Garrett Bischoff is either helping Aces and Eight, informing for them, or he is the head of Aces and Eight because his father put him there. And when Aces and Eight is revealed, Eric Bischoff will appear and then put his son over. Or has his son join him? That would be the most probable sense. So that's my idea of this, ladies and gentlemen. Garrett Bischoff is either helping Aces and Eight or he is going to be the head of Aces and Eight through his father, Eric Bischoff. If this is true, within the next couple of videos, well, not videos, the next couple of impacts, we must see Garrett Bischoff in some form of capacity, or we see Eric in some form of capacity. They both, in some form, must be seen or mentioned. If either one of them are mentioned or seen, we know something is going on, and there's a possibility I'm right. So I hope you enjoyed the Zane view. Subscribe and comment. I'm hoping the vid. I'm hoping the British Fist. I'm very sorry. I'm still learning how to do this types of videos. I have a tendency to get nervous, so I kind of rush through my words. But I hope the British Fist, and if I can connect this to the Off the Rope show as well, I hope they both like it. My idea is very far fetched. It is like this far away, ladies and gentlemen, this far away from being even possible. But after what happened with Impact with that masked person, who was not masked at first, who looked like Garrett Bischoff putting on a mask and then whacking double A, Austin Aries, in the back of the head, it's hard not to consider it. So you have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. 